Welcome to our tutorial on the 8085 16-bit data transfer copy instructions part 2. Okay, so here we're gonna learn about four types of instructions. Okay, so let's just get started. So first up we got the types of instructions okay that involve data transfer or copy between the HL registers okay and the memory. Okay, so in this category we got two instructions namely the LHLD and the SHLD okay so let's just start with the LHLD first so the LHLD instruction but I mean the LHLD instruction is basically used to load the HL registers directly okay with two data bytes so that we can have a 16-bit data okay and these two data bytes well they come from I mean consecutive memory locations okay starting from the specified 16-bit memory address okay let's just give an example over here let's say uh, okay let's say we have a two memory locations let's say 2050H okay and uh, the other one is 2051H okay and well at each of these memory locations we have corresponding data bytes let's say here we have the data byte of uh, 2FH okay and the other one has a data byte of uh, let's say um, what can we just say okay uh, 3 uh, 2H okay so this is I mean these are the data bytes in the corresponding memory locations 2050 and 2051H respectively now if we'd wish to uh, well transfer these data bytes from the corresponding memory locations into I mean both of these data bytes from the these two memory locations into the HL I mean into the H and L registers correspondingly so what shall happen is that now we can basically do that using this particular instruction that is LHLD so if we write here LHLD and give this particular memory location that is 2050H okay then what will happen is that the corresponding data byte that is present at the specified memory location that is 2050H as you can see will get stored into the register L okay so here you'd have the data byte 2FH stored okay and well the memory location would get incremented by one automatically and move to 2051H and the corresponding data byte present in the consecutive memory location 2051H would get transferred to the H register so that the H register will now contain the same data byte as present in the memory location 2051H that is 32H so there you have it okay so now uh, you can basically well, get an idea as to how this instruction can basically be applied now once we uh, use this instruction well this instruction ju just you know leads to uh, treating the H and L registers but well, together as a pair okay so these two registers are treated together as a pair so that the entire data content of the HL registers uh, you know they it just corresponds to a 16-bit data so this way uh, we can basically understand that this kind of an instruction that's the LHLD is specifically suitable in 16-bit data operations and uh, also in mainly in kind of 16-bit uh, data arithmetic operations and um, whichever uh, way we can just you know use it in uh, the corresponding programs okay so this is a very important instruction okay as goes for the 16-bit data operations and the next instruction that is SHLD just does the reverse of what LHLD does so in a way we can summarize the operation of the SHLD instruction uh, by the entire content written on the left so it says that well store now SHLD actually means store HL registers directly okay so what this instruction does is that it just stores the 16-bit content 16-bit data content of the H and L register pair okay directly into consecutive memory locations starting from the specified memory address okay so let's give an example over here now whatever happened I mean whatever uh, I just showed you in the previous example we just perform the reverse of it okay now say that the HL register pair is well loaded with this data okay this 16-bit data that is 32 in the register H and 2F in the register L now let's say we want to load these data uh, I mean the 16-bit data okay 
into corresponding memory locations okay uh, and th those memory locations would be uh, you know let's say uh, 20 f e h okay and 20 f f h correspondingly now these two locations let's say they are empty okay and we want to load these with the data bytes present in the h and l registers okay so what do we do we can just do that by using the shld instruction we just write it this way s h l d and give the starting memory location that is 20 f e h okay so 20 f e h there you go and now this particular instruction will lead to the storage of the corresponding data bytes from the h and l registers respectively into the corresponding memory location so since the memory location specified is 20 f e h here so the lower uh, data byte that is the one stored in the register l so in a way register l contains the lower byte okay of the 16 bit data that is the entire thing present in uh, the h l register pair and the h register on the other hand it contains the higher byte okay so this lower byte from the register l gets stored into the location 20 f e h as was specified in the command so we have 2 f h stored in the location 20 f e h okay and then the uh, memory address increments by one and the corresponding uh, data byte from that's the higher byte from the register h gets stored into the memory location 20 f f h okay so there you go so this is the kind of operation that takes place whenever we use the LHLD and the SHLD instructions okay and they are as I said very popular when it comes to 16-bit data operations uh, you know involving 16-bit data arithmetic addition and all so there you can just use these instructions uh, with ease okay and also you should remember that well both these instructions they are three byte instructions okay and in both their cases the flag bits they remain unaffected as well since they only pertain to uh, transferring and moving of data bytes here and there so the flags remain unaffected okay next we come to the category uh, of the instructions that involve data transfer and copy between the HL registers and the program counter okay well so far uh, you couldn't access the program counter well we nobody can ac access the uh, data of the program counter but we can also but we what we uh, will have a getaway we can well load the program counter register okay with a 16 bit data to transfer the program control and that is exactly what the pchl command does now this instruction well it doesn't have any kind of operands as you can see and this instruction well it actually will stands for load PC that's the program counter register which is of course as you know is it's a 16-bit register and it's used to point uh, or keep track of the memory locations uh, through which the 8085 would traverse or uh, you know through which the 8085 would just you know, explore to fetch the corresponding uh, the data bytes uh, it could be either opcodes or data whatever now what the PCHL uh, command does is that it just loads the program counter register with a 16 bit data okay taking together the entire content of the H and L registers okay and also you can see that it's a single byte instruction so now let's just take a look at how this thing happens so imagine that the H L registers well it contains uh, well the eight let's say the H register what contains uh, a data byte of let's say three zero okay and L contains F2 okay so these corresponding data bytes that are present in the HL registers if they're loaded into the program counter okay the program counter will treat this 16-bit data as a memory location okay and immediately transfer the control of the program over there so now if we would you know basically declare this statement over here I mean this command over here so if we write here PCHL okay then what happened is that this is the program counter register it's a 16-bit register now this gets loaded with the entire content of the HL register pair okay where the content of the L register is treated as the lower byte 
okay now since it's a 16-bit data and the content of the H register here is treated as the higher byte okay so this entire thing basically gets loaded into the program counter register so that its content right now uh, becomes 30F2H okay and immediately the program co counter would just you know transfer the control of the program to this corresponding memory location so this just becomes now this needs to be this 16-bit data but needs to be a valid memory location in order to avoid uh, any kind of errors okay so this needs to be a valid memory address all right now due to this kind of an operation you can also regard the PCHL instruction well equivalent to a an unconditional jump instruction so that's what this particular red box highlights over here so this could be treated as equivalent to an unconditional jump instruction okay that just transferred the program control immediately okay next we got the exchange instruction okay and that includes the XCAG command alright so XCAG actually stands for exchange the contents of the H and L registers with the D and E registers respectively okay so whenever we're uh, well trying to exchange the contents of the H and L registers with DNA registers we should always keep in mind that uh, we, we can well use the XCAG uh, statement of course okay but we should always keep in mind while using this uh, uh, kind of statement that it operates only or, or rather the operation would only involve the HL and the DE registers only okay and no other registers can be involved under this uh, instruction okay so as you can see that it has no operands so let's just uh, show you an example of how things happen over here let's say the H and L registers okay they contain a, a data byte of let's say uh, well 30 FFH okay and now we want to exchange this entire uh, uh, data byte I mean, the 16-bit data byte with the DE registers okay now also let's take uh, the D and E registers okay so let's see uh, what they contain okay let's just you know assume that the D and E register what they contain uh, well let's say the data byte or uh, okay 20 uh, 50H not a problem so this is an entire 16-bit contain I mean 16-bit uh, data content present in the DE register pair and this is an 16-bit data content present in the HL register pair okay now here uh, treating as a pair or not that's not important but the exchange uh, is what is important in this uh, particular example so if we would write this uh, you know particular uh, instruction let's say if we just plain and simple we just write it this way XCAG then what will happen is that the data bytes okay uh, would be exchanged between the H and the D uh, registers okay so that the content of the register D currently would be transferred to the register H and the content of the register H currently would be transferred to register D and similarly the content of the register E would get transferred to L okay and the content of register L would get transferred to the register E so that after this instruction gets executed okay the new content of the HL and the DE register pairs would look somewhat this way okay so now that the uh, content of the H register is transferred to uh, the register D so now the register D would contain the data byte 30 while the register H would contain the data byte that was previously present in the register D that is 20 okay and again for the L and E registers the content of the register L would be now present in the register E that is FF okay and the content of the register E would now get transferred to the register L that is 50 so now you can see that an entire exchange of data bytes okay have taken place between the HL and the DE registers correspondingly okay so this is a useful instruction when it comes to 
exchanging of uh, data between these two registers, I mean the uh, HL and the DE register pairs uh, during you know various kinds of logic oriented uh, programming. Okay, and it's worthwhile to mention here that the XCAG instruction is basically a single byte instruction and also when it comes to the question of flags well the flags remain unaffected by this particular instruction as well okay and similarly for the PCHL command also the flag register bits are not affected okay so with these said we just wind up our discussion right over here okay and we're gonna see you in the next tutorial where I'm gonna explain a lot more instructions in detail okay so it's a short goodbye for now and see you in the next tutorial